Mill compared my imperfect pregnancy to Sill's perfect one for nine months. After Sill gave birth, she and my husband both cut contact with Mill. My husband and I have been married for well over two years and have been together for seven. He's amazing, quite literally the man of my dreams, and I have an amazing life with him now. My parents and the rest of my family love him. I'm Mexican and have a really big family. Fortunately, I haven't heard a single member of my family say they didn't like him as he is a gentleman to everyone which is what made me fall in love with him in the first place. We are the perfect partners and we rarely have arguments except when it comes to his mother. Mill is a nightmare, to say the least. My husband's family is smaller compared to mine. Other than his parents, he has a sister who got married last year. His parents are the stereotypical conservative small-town Christians and his mother is extremely protective about them to the point of being overbearing. She likes to be in control and insists on spending time as a family during the holidays. If we don't listen to her demands then she starts making a scene. When I met his family for the first time, his dad and I had no problems bonding as he was really chill and quiet. His sister, who was in her college in a different state and moved back only two years ago, has a great relationship with me. She treats me like her own sister. But when it came to his mother, it was quite difficult since she would say the most ridiculously sexist thing to me. For example, when they asked me what I did for work, I told them that I was a marine biologist, specializing in conservation efforts for marine life. Phil said that was awesome and looked really happy about it, but Mill just kind of frowned without speaking a word to me. I brushed it off not thinking much about it but later my Phil called my husband to say how my Mill wanted him to break off the relationship with me. According to my Phil, she has said I'm not the kind of woman that is good enough for her son. Her reasoning is because I don't act like a woman should since I have a job. I love my job and I love being a scientist. My husband has never expressed that he wants me to be a housewife or take up a stereotypically feminine job. If he did, we wouldn't be together. But apparently, that's what his mother thought he needed. She complained that with the well-paying job I have, might not become a housewife after marriage and that he should have found a better woman than me. My husband firmly told Phil to convey to his mother that who he chooses to marry is none of her business. I was glad my husband stood up for me. This was a green flag for me and also why I didn't walk away from our relationship right then and there after hearing what his mother thought about me. Unfortunately, as we kept getting serious, Mill just got worse and worse towards me despite how much my husband tried to protect me. It started out with snide comments here and there whenever we were left alone. She would manage to sneak into conversations about the fact that she thinks a good wife should be a homemaker taking care of the house and waiting for her husband to come back home. She also made it clear to me on several occasions that I didn't look like the kind of woman my husband should have brought home as I am not feminine enough to carry children. At first, I didn't take it seriously as I figured she might be joking but when she kept repeating it, I realized she was serious about it and I was shocked by the way her mind worked. One day when we were over for dinner after Mill had insisted on us coming over, she went off on this rant about how she missed living in a world where women took care of their own family and men went out to earn for their family. My husband quipped saying that the world didn't work like that anymore and that he was lucky to have a partner like me since we both earned quite well and took care of the house together. Mill shook her head hearing this and started saying how women should act like women and men should act like men. I knew she was knowingly talking about this but I tried to keep a cool head. Phil told her to calm down, and that this wasn't the time for that kind of discussion we needed to have but she got mad seeing that he was not supporting her. She continued to say how she was just speaking the truth and that she wanted the best for her son. She then looked towards me pointedly. I had heard enough from her so I quietly got up from the table and asked my husband to drive me home which he readily agreed to do. He looked at his mother with disappointment and we walked out. Later when Phil called to mend things, I firmly told him that it wasn't up to Mill to decide who her son gets married to and that she should stop trying to taunt me unnecessarily about having a job. Phil agreed and tried to apologize on behalf of her but I wasn't having it. My husband agreed and told his dad that if she didn't apologize then he would not be going back to see her ever. Perhaps his threat scared her into apologizing to me and I asked her to never bring it up again and she agreed so I managed to let that situation roll off my shoulders. Unfortunately, snakes don't shed their skins easily and just a few months later, when my husband and I first started living together, this was before we got married, and I had to go on a research expedition for a few weeks, she found out and called me to ask who was going to take care of the house and her son. I was confused hearing her questions and put her on speaker so my husband who was driving next to me could hear her as well. I asked her what she meant by that and she started to say how now that I was living with her son, I needed to stop being so immature. She continued to say how I should not go out for these expeditions and commit more to being a good partner to her son. My husband angrily told her that he didn't need anyone to take care of him and that we were equal partners who shared responsibilities. She got upset and started to say how we could not get married since I didn't know how to be a proper wife. My husband asked her to mind her own business and cut her call. When my husband proposed to me, my mill was extremely unhappy but she was even more unhappy when she found out that we wanted a small wedding. I had a huge family and it would be expensive for us to invite all of them since we were also looking to move into our own place so I finally chalked it down to all my close family members and I had already made up my mind to have a celebration with the other family members later and treat them. 
But Mill started arguing with my husband saying how she wanted to invite all her friends who she had not met for a very long time and our wedding would be the perfect occasion for it. When my husband asked her if she would be paying for their plates if we did agree to invite them, she got offended saying how as his parent, he should feel ashamed to even ask this since we both earn so well. We scoffed hearing her response and made it clear that we had already made up our minds about having a small wedding and if there was any uninvited guest that she had invited, then she would be responsible for their meals. Mill didn't like this but she could not do anything about it. During the wedding, she was loudly complaining about everything and made it very apparent that she hated my wedding gown. I didn't pay any heed to her comments and acted like she didn't exist because, for one day, I didn't want to be hurt by her mean comments. Sill, trying to protect me, tried her best to keep Mill away from me for the rest of the evening. Last year during mid-April, we found out that I was pregnant which was such good news for us since we had been trying for some time. We waited until I was around 9 weeks pregnant to tell our close family and friends about it. My Mill was quite upset that she was not the first one to know. She called me to say how as my husband's mother, she had every right to know first and that she was disappointed in me. I told her how we wanted to wait before saying such important news and that if she wanted to complain, she could feel free to call up my husband since I was in the mood to listen to her lectures about what a good woman should do. Just a month after I had announced my pregnancy, as luck would have it, Syl told us that she had just found out that she was pregnant also. We were shocked yet pleased to hear about this. This just meant that there would be one new addition to our family. Syl wasn't yet married but had a serious long-time boyfriend who we had all met. I knew that Mill would make a big deal about this pregnancy before marriage thing, which she did as expected but my husband supported his sister as much as she could and finally, Mill accepted. Phil was extremely emotional and was happy that he would have two grandchildren at a time. Syl and I started spending more and more time together since we were simultaneously pregnant and going through this journey together. We leaned on each other for advice and companionship during a period that was both magical and challenging. We shopped for our babies together and decided on our nurseries. During this time, Mill started to constantly compare my pregnancy with Syl's pregnancy journey out of nowhere as if it was some sort of a competition. She would say things like how Syl was clearly better equipped to be a mother than me since she had always been a homemaker unlike me who had a job. There would be snide remarks here and there like if I vomited more and she found out, she would say how Syl never vomited this much so it clearly means that her womb was better for the baby. As much as I tried to let her comments go, it would bother me and Syl hated it as much as I did. When it came time for my gender reveal party, I asked Syl to find out the gender of our baby from our doctor so she could prepare the envelope. She did the same when it came time for her gender reveal party. Mill was furious when she found out about this and had a major meltdown. She turned up at our doorstep screaming at us that I was trying to take away her grandchild from her by not allowing her to organize this gender reveal and that my husband should put his foot down when it came to me so she could be more involved in my pregnancy. My husband didn't like the way she was speaking to me as it was starting to give me a headache so he told her to get out or she would be cut off permanently from our grandchild's life. As usual, she made a scene crying and insisting that she only wanted the best for her grandchild but made her exit eventually. Later, we received calls from Phil and Syl as they were concerned with how she was acting, and we had to tell them everything that had happened. Syl was shocked to hear how her mother was behaving and urged me to rest as much as I could because clearly, I was distressed after all my mill screaming. During Christmas, my husband told his mother that we weren't coming to Christmas since I couldn't travel long distances. She was pissed to hear that, arguing how he was trying to stray away from his family and when he refused to listen to her, she hung up in the middle of the conversation. We thought she understood and would not bother us again. To our surprise, a week later, she texted him saying we should be at her place sharp at 4 p.m. My husband texted back to her reminding her about their conversation earlier about us not coming. She decided to call him and started screaming at him that he had no right to avoid family by acting like this and started asking questions if I was trying to deter him from coming. My husband told her that it was both our decision to not go and she started screaming again about how he needed to control his woman. Understandably, I started realizing how controlling and toxic Mill was becoming day by day and would share my concerns with my husband and Syl. Both of them would agree that she was clearly crossing the lines and would stand up for me but their mother was exhausting. When it came time to give birth, we didn't have time to inform anyone as I went into preterm labor at 33 weeks and our baby boy was born at 34 weeks viaduct emergency c-section after all efforts of natural birth failed. After my husband checked that both I and the baby were okay, he announced our son's birth on the family group chat and also informed my family. Everyone was so happy and busy congratulating me but Mill had yet another meltdown about not being told I was in labor and that the baby had been born. She sent us a barrage of texts personally saying how she should have been there in the delivery room with me watching her grandchild coming into this world. This was absolutely ridiculous since I would have never allowed her in but I didn't reply to correct her delusions as I was busy with my baby. When we announced his name, she called my husband crying about how it sounded too Mexican and that he should keep a different name. When my husband said he liked our son's name, she said how it could be our son's middle name but we needed to keep a different name. We obviously didn't listen and she kept fussing about it. When it came time for her to meet our son, she insisted on calling him a completely different name which took us by surprise. 
She tried to justify saying how this could be her special little name for him but my husband firmly asked her to cut it out. She also hates the fact that I breastfeed my son because then I would have to take him away from her and she says that I should start feeding him formula so then she can spend more time with him. My mother who was also present with me informed her how a newborn baby needs to have breast milk but Mill kept arguing that it was not fair. As you can imagine, her taunts and controlling nature were becoming more and more unbearable and clear to everyone. The final straw came when she invited me out for lunch saying that she had something important to talk about. I kept trying to cancel the lunch several times but she begged me saying that it was imperative that we had to meet. When I turned up, she greeted me warmly and we sat down to order our food. I then asked her why she wanted to ask me out for lunch and it was then that Mel asked if I had thought about who our son's godfather would be. I pursed my lips hearing this since I knew she would not like the answer. I carefully explained to her how Sil and I had discussed this and we were each other's children's godparents. Mill burst out crying in the middle of the restaurant hearing this and started yelling about how I could do this to her. She said Sil had her family and I should make her my son's godmother since she had every right to take care of my son as his grandparent. I reminded her how she thought Sil was better equipped than me so naturally, she should be happy that my son would be taken care of well by her but Mill argued back that only she could be trusted and I should make her my son's godparent. Her ridiculous demands were starting to get on my nerves and I told her firmly that we were done discussing this and that if she wanted she could discuss this with my husband later. Later, I did tell Sil regarding my lunch and she didn't like how Mill didn't want her to be our son's godparent. My husband also didn't understand why my Mill was behaving this way and kept ignoring her calls. Last week, Sil gave birth to her daughter and she had asked me to be in the delivery room for support since I have been through this. I happily obliged and was there with her throughout the night while my husband and my mother took care of our son at home. In the morning, after Sil had given birth and I made sure her boyfriend was there to take over the duties, I left to come back home and rest. Throughout the day, I received calls from Mill but I was too tired to talk with her and was busy spending time with my son. In the evening, my husband who had gone to check on his sister came back home amused. I thought he was happy to meet his nephew but he told me that he was even happier for another news. This is when he revealed that apparently, Sil, tired of Mill's toxic behavior, took a stand and decided to implement a no-contact rule between Mill and her daughter. He told me how when Mill showed up at the hospital unannounced, Sil asked the nurses to refuse to let her in. Only Phil was allowed inside to meet the baby since Sil didn't want her mother's judgments about her daughter. This was shocking and quite unexpected as I had never imagined that Sil would stand up to Mill this way. This also made me realize why Mill had been calling me the whole day. She was perhaps trying to either blame me or persuade me to convince Sil to see her granddaughter. When I talked with Sil later, I found out that this decision came after witnessing the extent of Mill's actions towards me all these years. The decision to go no contact was a necessary boundary to protect her daughter from Mill's toxic influence. It was a moment of reckoning for Mill as the consequences of her actions finally came crashing down. The fallout has been severe, and Mill is completely cut off from her daughter's life, unable to witness the precious moments of her grandchild's early days. Since then, I have started to think if it would be the right decision for us as well to cut off Mill permanently? Would it be too cruel? Update 1, hello everyone. First off I just want to thank you all for your kind words and advice, it means a lot to me. I didn't think this would get as much attention as quickly as it did. My husband and I have not had any contact with Mill since we found out that Sil has cut her off. She continues to call us but we ignore them. I discussed with my husband what I was thinking and we agreed that for our mental peace, it would be better for us to cut her out permanently since there is no guarantee that she won't behave the way she behaves with me with our son. To everyone asking why we waited for so long, you have to understand that my husband is the oldest who grew up in this toxic upbringing so he never really saw how wrong this all was until his mother started misbehaving with me. My husband has always supported me and protected me yet his mother is just too much to handle. Hence, we set up a group video call with his sister and Phil where we discussed our decision and they are on our side. Now we just need to inform Mill about our decision. Update 2, if your eyeballs are itching for an update then you better sit down, it's a bit long. My husband decided to go to call his mother and tell her about our decision yesterday evening. When she first picked up the call, she started screaming at him about how long it had been since he had talked with her and that she wanted to meet our son immediately. My husband remained quiet until she was done with her demands and then gently let her know about how she was right and that he needed to step up and be more of a man. Mill immediately agreed saying how this is what she had wanted from him all along but my husband interrupted her saying that as a man of our family, he had decided to cut her off from us permanently to protect us from her toxic ideology and drama. My Mill was dumbfounded at first hearing this, perhaps trying to process what he had just spoken, and then when she understood the severity of our decision, she started saying how she was coming over to meet us and that nothing could stop us from meeting with her grandson. My husband immediately warned her that we wouldn't let her in and we would call the police on her for trespassing on our property. She then started screaming that this was probably my decision and that I was tearing the family apart. My husband told her to think whatever she wanted but he was done with her but she continued to scream how this is why he should have never married a woman like me and that she knew I was bad news all along. My husband got pissed, naturally. 
He reminded her that we were not the only ones cutting off contact and that Sil has done the same thing so the issue is clearly her and she needs to start accepting that. Mill, as usual, kept arguing back that I had polluted the minds of everyone and that I had successfully taken her children away from her. My husband exasperatedly told her that if she wanted to blame someone then she should blame herself for not only being a bitter person but also a racist. He said that everyone was just done with her and she needed to come to terms with her own evil actions. This shut my mill up and he blocked her after their conversation. I have done the same. I have also informed my family about the situation and to not pick up Mill's calls for now. I feel bad for my husband and Syl for not having a supportive mother but I am also glad that I won't ever have to go through such shitty situations ever again. Update 3, it's been 2 months since my last update and I am happy to update that our son is doing well. Syl and I continue to remain close and we regularly meet up so our babies can have playdates. It is adorable to see how they are bonding and I hope that they continue to be each other's best friends as they grow up. Also, another happy update is that Syl is finally getting married to her baby daddy as we all knew that she would. Now coming on to the main update, we continue to be no contact with Mill. To everyone who was concerned about our safety, don't worry we have cameras installed everywhere and we did change our locks so there is no way that Mill can ever disturb us. I doubt that she will ever confront us publicly since by now a lot of people know exactly why we cut her off so she must be definitely embarrassed. After we cut off all contact with her, she did try to persuade Phil to talk with us but he refused and let her know that he was getting sick of her too. I guess when her own husband told her this, it might have finally made her think because a few weeks later, she asked Phil to tell us how sorry she was for everything that she had done to me. I doubt that she genuinely feels apologetic which is why we continue to not talk with her until today. Phil and my family continue to visit us and bond with our grandchild which is how it is going to be in the near future.